Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. I have what I think is going to be a pretty interesting video today. I have put together a compilation of a number of videos where people within the Christian world are offering teachings and excuses for why prophetic words may not come to pass. And the reason that I want to do this is that I think many people may be unaware that the Bible very clearly tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 18 that if someone gives a prophetic word and that prophetic word does not come to pass, that person is a false person prophet. So this idea that there may be reasons that prophetic words did not come true is something that really originated within many cultish movements and has been used by spiritually manipulative people in the past. Now, I am not saying that I know everybody's heart and the intentions of what's going on on the inside, but I can say that this has often been used in history by people who are looking for ways to maintain their position of authority. And so if they give a prophetic word that does not come to pass, well, they can't be labeled a false prophet. They can't lose credibility. So often people have had to come up with excuses to explain away why their prophetic word did not come to pass. So we are going to look at a number of these excuses today. We're going to think about them biblically, and hopefully it will open up your eyes to see um, that if people are having to make these excuses for why their prophetic words are not coming to pass, maybe it's because they are a false prophet. But before we get to that, if you want to help promote Christian content here on YouTube, go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel and thank you in advance. All right, with that, we are ready to go. So let's jump into our first video clip of an excuse for why a prophetic word may not come to pass. And the Bible says when two or more agree as touching any one thing upon this earth, it will be given to us by our Father in heaven. And so there's an agreement that is getting God in position to do something that the prophets have been prophesying that it almost seemed like he was restricted. He needed the agreement and the faith of the people to come to another level. Okay, guys, so that first clip was from Hank Kuhneman, the senior pastor of Lord of Hosts Church in Omaha, Nebraska. And in essence, his excuse is that the people of God, Christians, may not have had the agreement or the faith necessary to bring about the fulfillment of the prophetic word. Now, I already want to get you thinking biblically. Can you think of an example in scripture where a true prophet brings a prophetic word and it doesn't come to pass and he goes back to the people later and says, I'm sorry, guys, you just didn't agree with me about this word. You didn't have enough faith that it was going to come to pass and therefore that's why it did not come true. No, in fact, you do see examples in scripture where a prophet brings a true word and the people aren't believing in that word. But what happens? The word comes true anyway, and the people normally suffer the ramifications for not believing in it. So, for instance, when the prophets are calling people to repent, turn from your wicked ways, trust in the Lord, that is typically uh, the majority of the prophecies that we have, especially in the Old Testament. When they say that, if the people are saying, oh, God's not going to do that, he's not going to bring judgment upon us, well, what happened? The prophecy came true. The judgment came. And so it, it came in spite of the fact that people were not believing in it. So this is just one tactic that people will say, um, you know, hey, I had a good prophetic word, but you didn't do your part. You didn't believe. You didn't pray. You didn't have agreement. You didn't have enough faith. And that's why it did not come to pass. So that is excuse number one. For number two, we are going to jump now to Kat Kerr. And if you will remember, one of the things he had me say was that Trump would win by a landslide. Okay. Now, in man's mind, in their human mind, they already put together what they think that means. Right. But many times, as we know in the Word, or even just from experience ourselves, especially as a prophet, that doesn't ever mean what man thinks it means. All right, in that clip, Kat is referring to the prophecy she made in regards to the 2020 presidential election where she said that Donald Trump was going to win by a landslide. And her excuse, as you just heard in that video, is that when she said in a landslide, people may have misunderstood what she meant. I have heard other people say that um, prophets in the Bible, they used figurative language or they spoke allegorically. And so uh, sometimes people maybe just don't understand that. And friends, while it is true that there were instances in scripture where prophets did speak metaphorically or using some unique uh, imagery, it was very clear when they were doing so. So they would say something like, a bear approaches from the north. People would have understood they weren't talking about an animal, the bear. They were talking about a person. But in scripture, when a prophet speaks very plainly about something, 
it comes true the way they said it. So when Kat Kerr says Donald Trump is going to win in a landslide, her excuse is, well, you may have thought that I was saying that Donald Trump is going to win by a large amount, but maybe it was metaphorical. Maybe it was allegorical. Maybe you weren't really understanding the meaning of it. I want you to see again that this is just an excuse that someone would use to explain away why their prophecy did not come to pass. Okay, now we're going to get to Johnny Enlow, who is going to give us excuse number three. Uh, people want more proof of what's presently the truth, what's going on behind the scenes. But when there is a fog of war, you can't tell. So you try to tell people President Trump is not as disempowered as you think. Um, and they want proof. Well, the proof will be forthcoming. I think the proof will be forthcoming that over the last year, ever since November 3rd of last year till now, they will find out that there is not a person on the planet that has exercised more power and authority than President Donald Trump. That will be wow. revealed. And wow. it's, it's been, it's been well, bigger I than being, if anything, he made a shift from President of the United States to President of the world in the sense of how he's being used and what's taking place. Okay, so Johnny Enlow, once again referring to the prophecies made about Donald Trump, said that it may appear that Trump did not win the presidential election in the U.S., but in reality, he has graduated on to being the president of the world. He's the most influential person in the world. And I use this excuse because it ties really closely to another excuse, which unfortunately I was not able to find a video clip for. I have seen it multiple times and heard it with my own ears. I just could not find them when I went searching for them. But some people will make a prophecy such as the one concerning Donald Trump winning the 2020 presidential election. And then they will say something afterwards to the effect of, well, Donald Trump is the president in the spirit. I've actually heard that from a couple of people. And now Johnny Enlow is saying, well, you know, Donald Trump is like the president of the world. And so you basically say that your prophecy was fulfilled. It was just fulfilled in a more spiritual sense or in a different sense than what people expected. But once again, guys, the prophecy was that Donald Trump was going to be the president of the United States and that did not take place. Okay, now we are going to move to our next excuse and this one is coming from Tommy Arayomi. But you prophets, wait until the fullness of time. Do not throw in your towel, nor let up your intercession, you mighty warriors. A 400 year prophecy surrounding Israel's captivity took 430 years to come. Was Abraham a false prophet? An 11 day journey took 40 years. Was Moses a false prophet? Okay, this excuse from Tommy Arayami is probably the most common one that I encountered down in my comment section when I am calling somebody out for a false prophecy. And as you heard, he basically was saying somebody may have given a prophetic word and it appears to not have come true yet, but we just need to give it more time. I get that comment all the time. You just have to give it more time. Let the prophecy breathe a little bit. It will come to pass in due time. And we need a little bit of nuance on this one because I could acknowledge if someone gives a generic prophetic word where they do not attach a date to it, then yes, we would need to give it more time to assess whether or not that prophetic word did come to pass. However, when it comes to the Trump prophecies, and Tommy's video was actually made in response to the people who prophesied about Donald Trump being uh, elected in 2020, since they gave, many of them gave a very specific date. He was going to be elected in 2020. He was going to have back-to-back -back terms. That did not take place. And you see that in his little video clip, Tommy trying to use Abraham and Moses as examples of people in scripture who gave prophetic words with specific dates and it didn't come to pass the way that they said. Now, I've already done a complete video assessing that idea and you see that in both of his instances that he brings up, he is completely lying. Abraham never gave a prophetic word that uh, the people of Israel would be enslaved for 400 years. In fact, God told Abraham that that's what would take place. And it says later that the people of Israel were in Egypt for 430 years. So they were in Egypt for 430 years, but they were only enslaved the last 400 years of it. So the word that God spoke came true. And with Moses, he says, well, the 11-day journey took 40 years years to see a false prophet? 
No, because he never prophesied that they were going to make it in in 11 days. He never gave a specific date when it was going to take place. And so you see, Tommy is throwing a couple of the major biblical characters under the bus to try to say, well, see, there are people in scripture and they said something was going to happen by a certain date and it didn't take place. We just have to give it time. Friends, there are zero examples in scripture of any true prophet saying that something will happen by a certain date and it not coming to pass by that date. So I think about Jeremiah saying that the southern kingdom of Judah is going to be in exile in Babylon for 70 years. Guess what? After 70 years, they're out of exile. That is exactly how it works. So this is, once again, just an excuse. And I really wanted to focus a little bit more time here because this is the most common one. And friends, if you've been in this movement and you've been using this excuse, I want you to just think how absurd it is that this man is having to lie about scripture. And I will put a link to my entire video that I did where I go to the scripture. And you can see that the claims that he is making, he is he is totally making them up. And he is actually lying about what the Bible says. And that should really concern you when people have to twist scripture and lie about things as a way of making excuses for people who are uttering false prophecies. They are blaspheming against God. So this is a really big deal. Okay, we're going to move now to our next video clip. And this is kind of a compilation in and of itself of many people who are in essence making the same excuse. Prophet Kat Kerr told the Elijahless Steve Schultz that the prophets did not get it wrong. She says God is getting ready to uncover corruption and evil. She says it will be a landslide of exposure. It'll start with a phone call, and I can tell you, you will be shocked to see how much exposure comes from that. But Trump will win. He wow. will be president of the United States. He will sit in that office for four more years, and God will have his way in this country. Kerr is not alone. Prophet Jeremiah Johnson believes before Trump is declared the winner, Joe Biden may prematurely announce that he is the next president of the United States. He wrote to his followers, quote, either a lying spirit has filled the mouths of numerous trusted prophetic voices in America, or Donald J. Trump really has won the presidency, and we are witnessing a diabolical and evil plan unfold to steal the election. Christian prayer leader Lou Ingalls says it's not time to despair, but rather for the church to pray like Esther and that corruption and voter fraud be exposed. Expose, expose. That's what happened to Haman. A three-day Esther fast. And then a scene is brought forth where literally, um, literally Esther exposes Haman and a sudden reversal takes place. All right, pretty easy to see that excuse. Basically, they are saying that the prophetic word may have come true, but there were evil people that came in and corrupted and schemed against it, or there was a satanic attack behind it all, and that's what kept it from coming to fruition. Now, I want you to think about how weak this excuse makes God appear, because in essence, you are saying that God is not... Um, wise enough or powerful enough to know that corruption was going to come against his plan and he, he couldn't see it or he couldn't do anything about it. And friends, we know that is absolutely not the case. And so once again, this is just a way of excusing the fact that these prophetic words did not come true. Now you're making it seem like people came in and they ruined God's plan and he was just completely incompetent and not able to deal with it. And so it's not only the fact that these excuses protect false prophets, it's that they really demean and blaspheme God because they make it seem like he is not in control over all things that take place. Okay, we're, we still have a few more excuses that we are going to get to, but we have reached a special part of the video because we are now heading into what I call Valentin Valley. That's right, we're going to be looking at three different excuses that have been put forward by Bethel's very own Chris Valentin. So let's get to his first excuse here. Because tonight we're talking about encounters that change you. Saul has this prophetic word that he's going to be king. There's only one problem. He's, he's got the right word, but he's the wrong guy. And Samuel says to Saul, listen, I need you to go down to these prophets. They're going to be coming down the mountain. And when you encounter them, you're going to be changed into another man. And I, I want to say that there are a lot of people carrying prophetic words. 
that never come to pass because you haven't come into the community that changes you into the person you need to be so you can fulfill that word. Okay, so Chris is obviously referring to the story involving Saul where Samuel has just told him that he is going to be king over Israel and he tells them that on his way back to his father, he's going to run into a company of prophets and at that point, he'll be changed into a different man and he would start prophesying. And he just has the weirdest most egregious take on this situation and basically says that Saul needed to be around the right community of people so that he could change into the person that could receive this prophetic word. What a horrific understanding of that passage and what is taking place. But Chris Valentin twists the scriptures and does what we call uh, eisegesis, meaning infusing his own ideas onto that story to come up with the excuse that maybe the prophetic words have not come true in your life because you're not around the wrong people. So it's not that the prophetic word was bad. You have to get into the right community so that you can change into a different person that is ready to receive that word. I can assure you there is nothing in scripture that is even remotely close to what Chris Vallotton is teaching there. But he does have more excuses for us, so let's get to the second one. So let's say I call you out and I say, I see you as a nurse. And you're like, no, I'm not a nurse. Well, that's not a good word. See, part of the reason why people don't receive grace to change is because they, they misunderstand what prophetic ministry is. See, it's as if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet. Now, we're not just talking about prophets. We're talking about prophetic ministry, too. If you receive prophetic ministry in the name of prophetic ministry, then you'll receive the prophetic ministry's reward. What is that? The ability to do what you couldn't do one second before. We always say that the value you place on the word determines the power you receive from the word. Let me say it again. The value you place on the word determines the power you receive from the word. If you, receive, if you have very little faith in the word, don't be surprised if the word doesn't come to pass, and it isn't because it was a bad prophecy, it's because of very little faith. Okay, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I just have a really hard time understanding why people look at Chris Valentin as some sort of leader within the prophetic movement. I am not trying to be mean, and I am not trying to exaggerate at all. I've listened to a lot of Christian teaching some good and, and a lot of bad Christian teaching. And I have never heard anyone who is worse at teaching on the prophetic than Chris Valentin. I mean, think about this last clip. He said, uh, he referenced the passage of scripture that talks about if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. And he says the prophet's reward is the ability to do what you could not do one second before. That is clearly his own idea that he is inserted into that text. There is no scriptural basis for making that argument. And, and he's basically saying, if you just believe what the person is saying to you, it will come true in your life. And that ultimately leads to his excuse. He is saying that um, he said the value that you place on the word determines the effectiveness of that word. I'm paraphrasing, but it was something to that effect. So basically, if the prophetic word did not come true, it wasn't a bad prophecy. You just didn't value it enough. You just didn't want it bad enough. And he also, I mean, word for word said it's because of lack of faith. So this is very similar to something that we heard earlier. But again, if, if these, just think about all these excuses and we still have uh, one more to come. Think about all of the things that we have heard thus far. You didn't have enough faith. Uh, something demonic got in the way. You didn't place enough importance on the word. You just need to give it more time. Yada, yada, yada. Right? It did happen, but not in the way that you expected. You didn't understand my prophecy correctly. If these are the teachings that are being put forward by people and people embrace them, there is literally never a time where you can call anyone a false prophet because there are always these excuses that can be offered. And again, at the very beginning of my video, that's why I said these teachings originated with people who were leaders in cults or who were spiritually manipulative. They needed to look for new ways to explain away why their prophecies weren't coming to pass. But again, if you just think logically for a second, if you believe all of the things that have been taught by other people in this video, you would never, ever, ever be able to label somebody as a false prophet because there is an unlimited supply of excuses that people can use to explain away why their words are not coming to pass. Okay, we have one more excuse that will be given to us by Chris Vallotton. Let's go ahead and check it out. So the question is, what, what is a false prophet? In um, Acts chapter 21, Agabus prophesied about Paul. Agabus said that the, gent that the Jews would bind Paul and they would hand him over to the Gentiles. What actually happened, you can read it in verse 32 
and 33 is that the Gentiles bound Paul and turned him over to the Jews. Now, what's the point? The point is, is that uh, there's a difference between a bad prophetic word and a false prophet. You can, have, you can get the word wrong and not be a, a false prophet. Okay, so at least with this last excuse, there is an acknowledgement that somebody may have given a prophetic word that did not come true in the manner they said it would. But Chris Valentin's excuse is basically that doesn't make you a false prophet. It means that you are a bad prophet or you gave a bad prophetic word. And he attempts to use the story of Agabus in the book of Acts to back this claim up. Now, I have already done an entire video on Chris's claim here and looked at it. And surprise, surprise. Everything that Agabus said would take place happened exactly the way that he said it would. He was not wrong with his prophetic words or his details. They happened just as he said they would happen. And so now, again, you have created an out for people where you can say, well, yeah, maybe I gave a bad prophetic word, but that doesn't mean that I'm a false prophet. Where, again, Deuteronomy 18 is very clear that if someone claims to be speaking on behalf of the Lord and they claim to be giving a prophetic word, if the thing that they are saying does not come to pass that person is a false prophet according to scripture so again guys when we look at the totality of this i don't do it to mock and scoff i really do it out of genuine concern for people because i am afraid that there are many people who are sitting under the active teaching and ministries of false prophets and they have been deceived into believing that all of these excuses are legitimate and so i am hoping that god will graciously allow you to to think about some of the things that i am saying and that you will pay attention and that if you are in one of these prophetic communities where prophetic words seem to be um wrong a lot of the time but you keep hearing these same excuses you know just give it more time something will be uncovered that will that will show you that i was really right or you didn't have enough faith or any of the excuses that we looked at today i hope that you will start to think through boy i don't see any of this taught in scripture and you don't friends if you look at things in context now i understand we saw numerous examples of people claiming that they were using scripture to support it but when you actually dig into it and look at the scripture itself it doesn't support the things that they are saying. And so I hope you will say, I don't see any examples of this sort of thing in scripture. And you will also recognize that if you embrace this, nobody is ever a false prophet. Nobody's a bad prophet because there are always an unlimited supply of excuses. And so friends, let's get into the word of God. Let's study it for ourselves so that we can stay away from this sort of deceit. Okay, guys, I hope this is helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If it is helpful and you want to get this content out to more people, make sure you take a second now to subscribe to my channel. Also, I recently created a profile on Kofi. If you would like to partner together with me financially in ministry, you can check a link to that profile down below in the description. Thank you for doing so. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, God bless.